The a certification is one of the most, if not the most popular IT certification in the industry, as it's usually a person's first step in their IT certification journey. It was my first certification as well as many others as it's designed as an entry level certification covering a broad range of IT topics and concepts as well as being recognized worldwide as a validation of IT work related competencies that one must demonstrate when they're getting into this industry. We'll take a look at how the exam breaks down in a moment, but before we do, let's see where A plus fits into your IT career pathway. We've got the CompTIA IT certification roadmap here, and you can see that this is specifically focused on, well, A+. Notice what it says here, A+, uh, the A+, certification has helped launch uh, over a million IT careers, this gentleman being one of them, and you can see that it is geared towards the beginner or the novice, right? And you can see that along with some other entry-level certifications, and one of the things that's great about this is it shows you not only CompTIA-based certifications, but where does this certification from CompTIA sit amongst its peers and other vendors as well. And you can see that pretty much it forms the basis for just about every career pathway that you're going to get into. Uh, from beginner to novice all the way down to the bottom here, notice that A plus is involved. Now, let's go ahead and view what do we mean when we say it is the start for pretty much all of your career pathways. Well, if we look to the right hand side of the career pathways document here, by by the way, we'll leave the link in the comments below so that you can see this information as well and it'll benefit you like it has me and many others. Notice that we have information security here. We have networking, cloud technologies, hardware and services infrastructure, and you can see just a slew of other ones, right? But ultimately, where you start, it's going to be A+. It's a great way to start and learn all of those different concepts that you'll need to prove that you are competent in as you make your entrance into the IT landscape. Now that you know a little bit about how and where I would say it fits into your IT career pathway, let's go ahead and take a moment and we'll see how does the exam break down. Well, it is important to understand that there are more than one exam to be a certified and we're at the CompTIA's website here where they will tell you and give you this information. Like I said, any web pages that are used in this video will be in the links or the comment section below so that you can gain access to this. But if we look at some of the exam details, one of the things that you're going to notice is that there are two exams. All right, we're currently under what's known as the 221,000 series, and the two exams are 221,001 and 221,002 and they have different objectives that we will look at in just a moment. You can see that the launch date for this exam uh, was uh, January uh, 2019, and it gives you a little bit of an exam description. High level overview for the 1001, the very first exam, is that we have mobile devices, network technology, hardware, virtualization, cloud computing, and network troubleshooting. It really focuses on more of the hardware side of computing. But if you look at what 1002, the second exam, 221002 has, you'll see that it talks about configuring operating systems, expanded security, software troubleshooting, and operational procedures. So in this one, we're focusing a little bit more on things like your, uh, your software, your operating systems installation, when they talk about operational procedures, communication skills, soft skills, electrical safety, safety regulations. That's a little bit more about what's covered in the second exam, and we'll show you how they break down in just a second. If we look at how the exam is structured, both of these exams have around 90 questions per exam. The type of questions, you have a few different types of questions. You have uh, essentially multiple choice questions, which could be a single answer or a multiple answer. You also have what are known as drag and drops and performance-based questions. And performance-based questions, you can think of them as more as kind of point and click simulations that you'll have to uh, perform in order to show and demonstrate that you do have the knowledge that they're requiring you to know to pass this exam. If we look at what the passing scores are for this exam, you can see, well, we've got a 675 for the very first exam, and we got a 700 uh, for the second exam, and that is CompTIA's rating of 100 to 900. And you can see what the recommended experience is. Notice it says 9 to 12 months with hands-on experience in the lab uh, or in the field. Now, that's recommended. It's not required. I know myself, when I first started out in IT, this is where I started, and I started completely separate from anything in the IT industry. 
and I became A-plus certified, so you can too. If you don't have the recommended experience, that is perfectly fine. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, testing provider here, because you might want to know where you go to take the A-plus exams, and we can see that that is at Pearson View, and we'll discuss that coming up in just a bit. Now, the price here, uh, pay attention to whatever your local currency is. In this case, we're here in the United States, so we're talking about the U.S. dollar, and you can see it's $226 per exam. So it is important to remember what the price is because you will have to have that cash, if you will, to schedule your exam and pay for an exam voucher. Now, that's a little bit about what is on both of the exams. What do you say we go ahead and we dive in and we talk a little bit more about the uh, the 220-1001 exam. And I've got a document that's open here that shows you what the test and the exam details. How do the domains break down? Again, another one of the links that will be available for you in the description below that, so you can gain access to this information. Notice that it just really repeated the exam format that I've already stated. But when you look at what the exam domain breakdown is, notice that it's broken down into five domains and you can see how the domains are weighted for the 1001 exam. Notice that your hardware, your networking actually is around 20%, but notice down there at the bottom in domain five, about 27% of your entire exam is going to be on hardware, kind of like I've told you uh, in the past. So hardware and hardware and network troubleshooting, they make up the majority of the very first A plus exam. Now that is a little bit about what's on the 220-1001 exam. Now we do have another exam that you're going to have to take and you are going to have to pass to become A plus certified. So on the 1002 exam and more specifically 220-1002 exam, you can see some of the information uh, or some of the objectives and what you're going to be required to know. Things like assembling components based on cu customers required, our customer requirements. Notice that we're going to get more into the troubleshooting side of things in the second exam. But if we uh, scroll down to how the exam breaks down, more of those test details that we've kind of already taken care of and we've looked at on the CompTIA website, but also in this documentation as well. And if we look at how this exam breaks down, you can see that there are four domains. And when we look at these domains, you can see Say, see, the majority of the entire exam is going to be about operating systems and troubleshooting software with some other things sprinkled in as well, like the operational procedures that we mentioned. And that's a lot about things like electrical safety, how to handle components, uh, you know, what are the procedures for doing that? Uh, so component safety, personnel safety, as well as communication and soft skills all going to be required as you make your way into the industry, uh, especially for your entry level certification. So that's a little bit about each one of the exams. One of the things that we'd also like to show you is where do you go when it comes to taking one of these exams? And you're going to go to uh, CompTIA's trusted exam vendor, if you will. The exam vendor is Pearson View. Now here on their website, you can see that when you browse to their website, you can click the button there that says schedule your exam. Now, at the time of recording this, understand that we are in really the middle of the 2020 pandemic. So they do make mention of that there are proper guidelines that they are following here in order to ensure the testing centers, employee safety, as well as your safety likewise. But maybe that's got you a little bit nervous. Maybe you don't want to schedule your exam in a brick and mortar location, given the current times that we're living in right now. Well, that's okay. Pearson View recognizes that, and they also got another platform that is theirs as well, and that's known as the OnView platform. And the OnView platform, this allows you to take your exam from home or from your work location where you don't have to go to a brick and mortar. Now, there are some things that you have to qualify and uh, that, that you, uh, procedures that you have to follow, but you can take your exam from a non-brick and mortar location if that makes you a little bit comfortable, a little bit more comfortable than going to a physical location. Now, these are some of the things surrounding the A+. It's an exciting content. I know I love that content. This certification has mean worlds to me when it came to my entry into IT field, the IT field, and we hope that it'll benefit you. In the IT Pro TV library, we've got both courses on both exams, and we hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.